Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for inspired conversations with publisher Linda Joy on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. Welcome to Inspired Conversations, my friends. Thanks for joining me today. I'm your host, Linda Joy, publisher of Aspire Magazine, the premier inspirational digital magazine for women since 2006. I still pinch myself that I get to use my global media platform for good, for shining a spotlight on transformational leaders, including my guest today, who are making an impact in the world and um, really supporting, inspiring, and empowering others to do the same. I'm also the creatrix of Inspired Living University, a sacred community and curriculum for women. You can get on the wait list at inspiredlivinguniversity.com. So my friends, do you ever get the sense that you are being guided by something greater than you? Or suspect that you have access to as yet undeveloped psychic gifts? Well, you're in for a delicious conversation today, my friends. In today's conversation, my guest, Marianne DeMarco, will be sharing spiritual techniques and strategies that you can use to develop your psychic gifts, interpret intuitive messages, and strengthen your connection to souls on the other side if you desire. Mary Ann is the author of Medium Mentor, 10 Powerful Techniques to Awaken Divine Guidance for Yourself and Others, as well as the author of Believe, Ask, Receive, an internationally recognized psychic medium, healer, and spiritual teacher. Her work has been featured in media outlets like The New York Times, The Dr. Oz Show, Women's Health, and Red Book. After learning to meditate at the age of five, Mary Ann began consciously developing her connection with spirit in adulthood. Today, she offers validating and positive one-on-one -on -one sessions, powerful group readings, workshops, and individual mentorship for developing psychics. You can learn more at MaryAnnDeMarco.com. Welcome, Mary Ann. Thank you so much for having me. I am super excited. I'm holding your book in my hand. I have been enjoying it. And intuition um, and the connection with source and the divine, one of my favorite topics. So I was excited to have you here. I'm excited to be sharing your wisdom in Aspire Magazine. So I know that there's many listeners, because I was one of these people many years ago, like, I don't have any psychic abilities. I don't have that gift. That's only Marianne and Linda. What's your take? Does everyone have innate psychic and intuitive abilities? Yes, 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 yes. Everybody has an innate ability to connect with their inner knowing, their intuition, their psychic ability, however you want to frame it in your own authentic way. But that connection is available to all of us if we choose to access it. Now, you, you started very young, so mm. you just were born with this awareness. Were you, in, I know you started meditation at age five, but were you connected to your intuition then, or did that come much later? Wasn't I lucky? Yeah, I mean, I grew up really just being taught and made aware that there was uh, energy around me, that I had access to that, that I could ascend with my higher masters and search for my third eye through meditation for many, many years. So for me, I never had a question about whether it existed. I was trying to understand how to do it. That was really the bigger challenge for me. I never had that question of whether I could hear loved ones on the other side or whether I can hear the guidance of my higher power, my source. Um, that was never a question. But what was, was how do I was really searching into for like how do I do it? You know, who could teach me this amazing magic that I know that I can do? And then as I got into this work later on in my life, 
I went through some really tough times in my life and I wound up in the hands of a spiritual healer, Pat Longo, and I wound up in her classes. And suddenly it was then, and of course, in perfect divine timing that I realized, oh, we can all do this. This is something that we all have the capability of doing. So that's why I wrote this book too. That's why I wrote my first book, Believe, Ask, Act as well, because that it, it allows us, it gives us that freedom, that permission to um, access our inner light. Oh, it's such a powerful message because I believe the world needs us all, especially mm -hmm. now, to mm -hmm. own our divine gifts, right? Oh, yeah. I, like you, I had a, um, like, I think like so many, I've gone through my dark times, right? I've gone through my struggles, but I look back now, even though I may not have seen it in those moments, Miriam, but I can look back now and go, oh my goodness, I was being so guided and supported. And the universe and divine, my source was saying, hello, I'm speaking to you through all these signs. Why are you waiting for the cosmic two by four? And I was one that always <laughs> waited for the cosmic two by four because I ignored it. But life completely shifted for me when I got that, I, when I got exactly what you're talking about that, oh, I can do this too. I am yeah. divinely connected. It was life changing. Just that moment of awareness that like, like it sounds like you had that, like, oh, we can all do this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was a powerful awakening. And I think awakenings can be really dismantling. And I think that that's what's confusing. Uh, you know, when you are going through such a rough time, you find yourself in deep prayer, you find yourself in deep meditation, or you're searching for that answer in your life and that guidance in your life, when you lean into this space, when you lean into the fact that you already have the knowing within you and that your guides and your loved ones, angels on the other side can help you access that, it is life changing. And you don't ever go back. I don't know about for you, and I, I'm sure it's been this way, but I now know that I, nobody comes out unscathed, right? We're in this human world, this beautiful, amazing, hard school of Knox, but it is a school earth. And through that experience, we can have a team on this other side. And we do have a team on this other side that is telling us we're not alone and that they understand that we're having this human experience. But yes, we have access to the spiritual self to help guide us through and learn those lessons along the way. And aren't those lessons invaluable? Oh, they've been priceless to me. And yeah. like you said, there is no going back because as I share with my clients is the, the moment you have awareness of either a thought, belief, uh, pattern, that moment of awareness, you are now in control, right? Because in that moment of awareness, awareness you get to choose if you're gonna keep that thought, belief, etc and for me just that power of choice was liberating because i had been so unconscious right for i'm gonna i'm 60 this year so i'd say for the first 35 years and then when i started being aware of a pattern of thought or etc i was like okay this is my chance the awareness isn't coming up to make me uncomfortable it's coming up to serve me so i can clear it Absolutely. did you have that same conversation with yourself oh with yes clients? Yes, I did. And what I realized is, you know, in, in something about our thirties, I guess, you know, being in my thirties, I just remember feeling really uncomfortable um, in my own skin in that I was being led to a more authentic version of myself. And, and I started to give myself permission to let go of what didn't serve me any longer energy wise. And it was really, really hard. But what I noticed is that simultaneously, once I surrendered to that, I found myself in these classes and discovering the abilities that I knew were within me this whole time. The universe was saying, okay, you're ready now. And that I needed to go through a lot of these experiences in my life so that I then can give over what I learned to others and, and then teach it to others at some point, which is what I'm doing now, you know, just through life experience and being able to make that connection and have that unveiling I think is just something that uh, is a tribute to the fact that you start to trust, right, Linda, that you trust that divine timing and you just know that there's, um, there's just this forever path that you're on and it's okay. It's okay to shed old skin and to renew yourself and to find that maybe through your own spiritual guidance and how you can access it. Yeah, and, and what I, you know, comes up time and time with my clients is, and just with friends and peers, uh, 
but Linda, it, life is being hard right now. What am I doing wrong? And I'm like, you're not doing anything wrong. That's right. Right? This is the human experience. But when you go down the rabbit hole, whether it's fear, et cetera, you just for, have forgotten your spiritual truth, right? And so they see me recalibrate. And we just, me and my family just went through a lot. We had, a, my honey got a two brain diagnoses within mm. four days apart, an aneurysm and a tumor completely oh unrelated all in 2019 and they watched me navigate that and here's the thing i chose and he chose because we live our life we focus on the blessings in our life not the bullshit excuse my language right mm -hmm. so everyone's like but 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 you got this this and this and i go but the story i create is my own that's right i choose healing i choose blessings it doesn't mean things aren't going to happen that's part of us being here so do you hear that a lot too is like what am I doing wrong? I'm like, nothing. Or, or maybe a similar wrong. question. Yes, it's a repetitive theme. Everything that we're talking about has been a repetitive theme with all of my clients and my students. And they really want to understand why do I feel like there's this black cloud following me? Or why do I have this domino effect of one thing after the other? And spirit always brings you back to your accountability of your perception. And what, how do you want to choose to look at these situations? have your moment by all means we all want to cry bullshit at some point but what you could do is turn around and say okay i see that this is what's going on and i'm being diligent in my spiritual work because we don't dabble in this practice we have to be diligent and then you can honor how you choose to create the energy how you want to rewrite that role and in doing so you change your vibration you change the vibration and then you can start to see a shift whether it's a shift of healing, whether it's a shift of surrendering, uh, or just, I don't know, forgiveness, whatever it looks like for you, you can feel it within you. It's something that's really visceral. And then the exterior changes. Then you can start to see the storyline change. I think it's one of the most powerful tools that we have is to lean into that claircognizance, if you will, that knowing within you and fully trusting that the universe is there for you and that they have your back. Mm, you are speaking my language, girl. Mm -hmm. uh, Miriam, we're going to take a break. We'll come back and we'll dive deeper into that because there's so much insight just in that one um, message that you, you just shared. So we'll be back in a moment. I'm with Marianne DeMarco, author of Medium Mentor. Visit her at MarianneDeMarco.com. We'll be right back, my friends. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. Inspiration for a Woman's Soul. Aspire Magazine, inspiring and supporting women on the path of self discovery. Claim your free digital subscription today, which includes access to thousands of dollars of personal development bonus gifts from Team Inspiration Partners. Claim your Aspire Magazine subscription today at subscribe to aspire.com. Hey, America, we need to have a little talk. We've got more food than we know what to do with in this country, yet 17 million kids in America are struggling with hunger. Makes no sense. Luckily, the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks has volunteers gathering excess food and getting it to hungry kids. They're kind of like food angels. Hey, become a food angel yourself by supporting Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. We can't do it without your help. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Hi everyone, this is Shay Parker, the host of Best of the Best, which airs live right here on IOM Radio every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific. I'm super excited to bring you expert guest hosts, spiritual discussions, free psychic readings, and so much more. I can promise that you will not want to miss this one-of-a-kind, fun, yet touching, down-to-earth show. Join us every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific on OTRFM. This is Shay Parker, and I can't wait to see you there. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network.
Welcome back. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. Thanks for joining me, Linda Joy, and my special guest, Mary Ann DeMarco, author of Medium Mentor, 10 Powerful Techniques to Awaken Divine Guidance for Yourself and Others. So, Mary Ann, we were just talking about that moment of awareness, right? And that the, a lot of us have that conversation with friends, family, or ourselves of, what am I doing wrong? Why is this happening? And part of what really resonated for me of what you said is, I believe in recalibration, right? Yep. So if they're focused on everything that's going wrong, it lowers their vibration, which means as you and I know, it's going to attract more and it takes away inner peace. And for me, joy and inner peace are my guiding catalysts. So what are some of the techniques that you share to help women um, recalibrate all clients? Because I know you work with both. The first thing that we address is the doubt and fear behind the capability that they have or lack of capability, I should say. And the belief system goes along with that. We, this is blind faith to some degree. We are trusting an energy that's kind of unseen originally, right? And attached to that, could be the, I'm not worthy of doing this. Like you said in the beginning, that's for Linda and Marianne. I don't do that type of stuff. When you start to really accept that you are the light, that the energy that you have within you is part of the universe and that we are as one, and you believe that through your blind faith, whatever it may be for you, you start to see the evidential answers coming to you, right? The universe really starts to get to work. And then it becomes undeniable. So the first thing that we have to do is move your space, move your uh, sense of awareness into a space of believing. That's really important. Acknowledge that doubt and fear is going to come up as it always will. And when it shows up, use it as your superpower. Use it as, oh, that's just my doubt and fear getting in the way. I've been calling doubt and fear dear, like some hot Hollywood couple, like like Benefer or something. I've been putting them together because they're like the Bonnie and Clyde of the universe, I say in my first book, but they're always together. And when we address them, instead of trying to suppress them, we can then use them as our superpower. And then it's a cue for us to lean into our spiritual practices and our tools. And that could be anything from, you know, grounding and protecting yourself by bringing in the light into your body and soul, doing automatic writing, meditations, anything that feels cathartic to you. If it's prayer, it's prayer for you. But trusting that you are in a space of divine guidance always, that they will never fail you. It's probably one of the most uh, special gifts you can give to yourself. That's the awareness that you have to be in. That's the space you need to bring yourself to. It's life changing, isn't it? And I have to say that when you talked about trust, that was a big one for me. I had because of my childhood experiences. I, I energetically, everyone that met me thought I was the most joyful person. But deep inside, you know, when you're wounded, mm -hmm. like I had my story, and I had trouble trusting. Right? Like, how can I trust in something bigger? Yeah. And, and I just kept staying connected to my path. And the more I practice the rituals, the various tools and strategies, the, I built my trust muscles. Now it's instantaneous, right? That's Snap right. Up it's like, I received this knowledge. It, I trust it implicitly. So when someone does struggle with, and I, I agree completely, for me, it was self-worth too. I, I'm, I can't do this. So who am I to want these things in my life? How do you deal with those two, the trust, uh, maybe the victim story or um, the self-worth with someone that's really struggling with that? Where would they begin? At some point, we learned that, didn't we? Yes. At some definitely. point, somebody gave that to us. What I encourage my clients to do and what their guides encourage them to do is to go back to whoever gave you that in the first place. And you could do that through a meditation. Like I said, you could do that through automatic writing. But what you want to do that through wonderful therapy, but what you want to do is you want to give that back to where it ever, wherever it originated from. And symbolically, you don't have to literally go to that place with the person or the situation. But what you want to do is say, I don't need to own this anymore. And we unlearn it. These are conditions that we were not born with. We learn them through circumstance, through our world, what we've been taught. 
if we let go of all of that and surrender, find forgiveness, let go of the shame, whatever your trauma looks like for you, you start to get to cultivate a new energy within, not only within your soul, but what you vibrate. And then what starts to be received by other people is this more, more authentic, healed version of yourself. Now it's being represented in what's coming to you as well. And there is the validation. That's when, it, that's when spirit really shows up and you're seeing things with far more clarity. So I always tell people, get to the root of the matter, find the modality that helps you get there and then heal from that point on, knowing that you have guides that are on a journey with you to help you find that, extract the lesson. This way, nothing's wasted. Even our hardest times, even our traumas, nothing's wasted. We take those moments, we apply them back into our soul and we reinvent them into a more productive learning lesson. I love that. And that really resonates with my path. I have no more shame, mm. self-judgment, et cetera, about my past journey, right? Mm -hmm. All that is gone because I'm like, oh, I see. I had those experiences to help me become the person that was always there, right? My authentic self, my divine self. Um, you have a chapter in your book. I think it's chapter one, um, Discovering Your Authentic Worth. It's called Check Your Ego. Yeah. And I love that phrase, authentic self-worth, yeah. because it's based on our truth, as you were just sharing, not the projected stories that we picked up along our way. So why did you decide to start the book with that? How important is that? It's the biggest challenge. It's, it's very important that we own who we are with pride and, I don't know, excitement, I guess, is really what I want to say. I want people to be excited about who their soul is and everything that comes along with it. And the ego will show up and tell you, sit down and be quiet. Oh, You're yeah. not worried, right? You're not worthy of that. And when, again, just like fear and doubt, when that ego shows up, let's address it. I see you over there. I tell my ego, I'm like, okay, why don't you take a seat? Why don't you take a seat? And I'm going to continue to shine and go about my business. I use all these tools that I know that I have uh, to help myself first and then to help others. And so the idea of, finding who you are authentically is really going down to the core of your soul and who you are and what you were born to do on this earth and giving yourself permission to do that. You know, free will is also a really tricky thing. And that combined with our thoughts of ego based thoughts, what we were given by others, what we were conditioned to think can be dangerous for ourselves. And so learning through this process of doing all doing spirituality for all these years and having my own life experience, I just realized every time I changed that storyline and went back to what I felt to be true, this is really understanding what your intuition sounds like as well, that inner knowing, that inner voice. You just don't doubt it anymore. And to your point, it becomes instinctual. Yes. And, yes all right. And, and yep. And anything else outside of that then becomes uncomfortable. There's so much wisdom here. There's something you said um, right before that, that powerful statement. It was talking about fear and how you um, call your fear dear. What I started <laughs> doing because fear, when you know, when you grow with anxiety and depression, which I did for thirty-five, maybe even forty years, which mm -hmm. means sometimes it's still there, right? If I'm right. diligent and conscious of my thoughts, beliefs, and my own spiritual practices, it can sneak in, especially when life is coming at you. That's right. And so when I was young, I don't know about you, but fear was this dark, scary monster that you run from. That's right. Mm -hmm. so I spent my life running. And then now, kind of similar to you, what you did is I had to change the story I had around fear. And I started envisioning a little girl. And so for me, it's like, oh, honey, I, every time this stuff comes up, I'm like, oh, honey, I know you're scared. I understand, but I'm here now. Let me um support you and right. it sh shifted the energy and the and the other big thing for me was um when stuff comes up and it does it does my, my honey's having a zen follow-up angiogram on next tuesday at the time of this taping mm -hmm. and of course you know little little things will come up like oh what if and i go linda is that the truth of who you are because that quiets my ego the fear and I go, of course not. That's not the truth of who I am. The truth of who I am knows that all will be well. And I play that. Um, you do a lot of the self-talk too? 
Oh, absolutely. I think self-talk is really conversation with your guides. Yes. And yes. I love that you, you say to yourself, Linda, because it's as if someone's speaking to you. And that is exactly what's happening. Uh, having fear, I, I was doing a talk the other evening and I realized my guides kept saying deer. I kept coming out with deer for doubt and fear. So I actually came up a little exercise about it that plays to this point. And I thought, well, if we're going to combine them like that, you know, maybe we, we, we break it down where the D is your disbelief, the E is your ego, right? And then we move into the second part of it to heal, which is the A could be the acceptance and the R, your reality, your real reality, right, of the situation. And then I thought, oh, and what if we take that and we write a letter to ourselves? We start it with dear, dear Linda, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And you're writing about why, why it's presenting itself in your disbelief of whatever that may be, uh, the ego and how it's showing up. And then you lean into that letter uh, more about the acceptance and the reality that you're creating with the energy. And, and, and to me, it's incredibly powerful. That's not even the book. That's a fresh one. Your, your readers can try it out. Your uh, listeners can try it out and let me know <laughs> what they think of that one. But I channeled it the other night and I thought it was so cool because in this particular situation, it is a stressful situation, right? That is, we are, this is a human experience that, that you're having in this moment and, and leaning into your spiritual self, I think is just one of the most powerful things that you could give. And that, that we, what we think might be self-conversation is actually a beautiful conversation that you're having with your higher self, higher beings and your inner knowing. It's really uh. powerful stuff. And they will always come in with comfort and talk you down and calm you down and whatever that may be. Uh, yeah, I refer to mine as my divine support team. Absolutely, you know? your and, universal and team. I've had them for years. We're going to take another break, Mary Ann. And when we come back, I want to talk more about, um, about self-doubt and learning to put it aside and what advice you have to offer those who are having a hard time letting go of doubt. So we'll be back in a moment. I'm with Mary Ann DeMarco, author of Medium Mentor. Learn more about her books, programs, and services at MaryAnnDeMarco.com. We'll be right back. This is OTRFM part of the IOM Radio Network. Are you being called to step into your truth and embrace your divinity? Are you ready to align your heart and soul, live an authentic life, and become a divine magnet for love and abundance? It's time to listen to your inner wisdom and clear the blocks holding you back from your best life. Leading intuitive prosperity coach, Akashic Records practitioner, and evidential medium, Jamie Hearn of LiveYourDivinity.com empowers and supports spiritual women like you to align your inner and outer worlds, embrace your soul's truth, and live your divinity. Through her intuitive gifts, grounded wisdom, and empowered coaching, Jamie guides women back into sacred alignment with their truth. Visit LiveYourDivinity.com to learn more about Jamie's empowering programs and to schedule an Akashic Record reading. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. This is Terry Van Horn, and I want to invite you to join me for my weekly radio show, Hailing Light, on Ohm Times Radio, every Wednesday at 6 p.m., Eastern Standard Time. On Healing Light, we want to bring love, light, and blessings into your world. You can find out more about us at www.healinglightonline.com. Blessings. Me, a cat moving in with a new human. It took a little getting used to. She has these weird games she likes to play, like this giant feather. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. It's almost like she thinks I enjoy it. But seeing how much fun she gets out of it, well, I guess it makes it all worth it. Humans. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. 
You're listening to Inspired Conversations. I'm so grateful that you are circling up with us today. I'm excited to have my guest here, Marianne DeMarco. We have been talking about intuition, psychic abilities, learning um, to navigate the fears and doubts that will come up um, because we're part of this human existence. So in the book, Marianne, a major part, you say a major part of this path is learning to put doubt aside. And we just talked about that a little. What advice do you have to offer those who are having a hard time letting go of doubt? I have some friends that I'm always, they're reaching out all the time to recalibrate them, um, but they just keep going back to the same patterns. So I'd yeah. love to hear your insights. Sure. Being on that hamster wheel of thought of doubt is a hard habit to break. When we start doing what I, what I love to tell people is let's not think of it so globally, because I think that that can be overwhelming, but if we bring it down to this, the slightest change in your thought, the slightest difference, we can make a really big ripple effect. And I think that that kind of frees us up into thinking again, that this is something so outside of ourselves. It's not outside of ourselves. The spirituality lives within us. And then you can kind of play around with why you're having that doubt. And there could be many reasons. It could be cultural background, religious background, how you were raised, whatever that may look like. And I want you to sort of think about what, let's not try and push it away. Let's try and see what serves us best actually from all of that information that was given to us, right? So if it's feeling like you have a God that loves you or you have a family support that's really wonderful, let's lean into the spaces that serve us best and allow that to be the framework for your spiritual practice. And then we lean into practice, consistency. I write a chapter in the book, Don't Dabble. Uh, it's just like we were talking about like any muscle. If you're going out to run a marathon, we don't, we're training for it. We don't just kind of, you know, go out for 20 minutes every other week, right? We mm. want to train those muscles. And that is the same thing with this type of practice. You have to find what your commitment looks like for you. And I show you how to do a schedule, a spiritual schedule that uh, suits your lifestyle in the book as well. And write it out, write what that looks like. When you consistently answer your doubt with your higher self, even if you're not believing it in the moment, we start to tap into, again, making it instinctual. The vibration then shifts again. So consistency is key. And whatever it looks like for you, I always tell people, don't make your spiritual practice look like, like, like anybody else's. Let it look like what it looked like for you, your voice in that. And then that doubt, when it does show up again, you, start a, you don't even believe it any longer. You're, it's just showing up out of habit. And then you answer, with your new inner voice that is saying, I'm good. I am believing this. I'm going to continue to do it anyway. And then again, spirit shows up. And I always say they like to show off in those moments because it's so evidential and how crafty and wonderful they can be at placing signs and symbols and situations around you that are working out. Uh, it's almost magical, but what you're really doing is you're just seeing it now with more clarity because you've raised your vibration up to that level of belief. Mm, I love this. And I love what you said is um, like they love to dazzle and surprise you. Mm -hmm. um, I love watching for signs and I have grandchildren. I have a 23 year old grandson and a um, 10 year old granddaughter. Mm. Both are very open and intuitive, but I've learned more since the birth of the first one. Right. So the little one, she is all about signs. She has her own crystal connection. She, um, <laughs> has, a, she has found 25 no 29 um four leaf clovers in a lifetime her mother uh -huh. lived. but you know what she says this is and i'm curious the reason i'm bringing this up is about children mm. um she my her mother um dates them and laminates them and she has them in a little book and one day i said to her she found one for her grandpa she comes running in the house she hands it to him and she goes oh Amma, i have to find you one and, you know, being the arm of my mind, my ego wanted, you know, wanted to be disappointed. My mind wanted to say, oh, baby, that's okay. Because like my mind, honestly, maybe I wanted to say, what are the odds, kid, that you're going to run out, right? But I taught her to believe in magic. So we all run to the window because she runs out the back porch. We see her just walk over to a giant patch. And then she sits on the grass and run, runs her hands over it, pluck. And she comes running in and we all look at each other and we said, there's no way in the house she found another four leaf clover, <laughs> but she did. So I said, McKenna, I, I am at the time 55 years old, honey, and I have never found a four leaf clover as much as I tried. 
And she, I said, can you tell me how you do it? She goes, she looked at me and the family, like we had five heads. She says, I just go outside and ask them to show me where they are. Out of the mouths of babes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So my question for you is like, see how you started meditating at five. I've come to believe we are all born wide open. Oh. And then the world shuts us down. Are you seeing, are you seeing more individuals accepting that knowledge? Yes. Or do you see them, like, do you have, I don't know if you have children or clients, children in your life that you're mm -hmm. seeing that they're coming in, like, buzzing wide open. Yes, absolutely. I have a 23-year-old daughter and a 21-year-old son. And uh, I, like I said, I was, I really had, I'm so lucky to grow up with a mom who is really open and very spiritual. And she, what she did brilliantly actually was never really drew a lot of attention to it either. Uh, so I didn't feel the need to perform either, yes. you know, right. It was really just whatever came out of my mouth naturally. And I was never shut down. I was never turned off. At some point, we have a tendency to say to children, uh, your imaginary friend is just an imaginary friend when in actuality, it's probably a spirit guide showing them the way. The fact that your yeah. granddaughter just went out and was like, what's the big deal? I'm just going out and asking them to show me. <laughs> I think it's really a testament to how she's being raised in the environment that she's been given the freedom to think that way. And I think that's really beautiful. I know it's really beautiful. What I'm seeing a lot now is uh, young adults very open to figuring it out, maybe attached with a little bit more anxiety uh, because they're not understanding the energy because I do feel like we're in the middle of uh, well, the shift has really happened, but we're in the middle of, you know, such an awakening that people, the veil is getting really thin and people are starting to feel that in many, with many different ages, but the children that you, the young, young children that you're seeing coming in now, to me, are part of, I don't know that they'll ever be shut down. You know, I think that they are coming in knowing, with a knowing that maybe we had to learn a little bit more. And that's just my channeling about it you know it's kind no of I, how feel, I receive I, it you know but i feel yes. that though i feel that they're coming in stronger so like her it's so organic where myself at 10 i was already being shut down for right. being too creative too visionary right to mm -hmm. so i think i think you nailed it i think that's so true and i just wanted to bring that up because we have so many women who are in my audience who have children and grandchildren that are like us Mary, and they want to love and support them like she can talk to butterflies and call them over she we have so many pictures of her calling in dragonflies and they're sitting all over her. and we're like well this we're, is just, this we're is here to is. learn we're here to learn from them yes so this new so, generation that's coming in people were talking about people who are struggling with doubt and fear if you're having children who are coming to you in full acceptance they're really showing you the probably really old souls that are coming in and they're coming in teaching these older generations. It's okay. Free yourself and allow yourself to be part of this amazing vibration that you have access to, because not only is it helping our space in this world, but it's also helping the energy on the other side and whatever it is that they're taking care of, right? We all have to work together. Yeah. I, I think there's such gifts to the world and, um, her mom is the same way, um, just nurtures of who she is, doesn't try to control or change it, and just lets her unfold. That's my daughter's favorite word. She's meant to unfold. She's going to be who she is. That's beautiful. Um, without my agenda. That's uh, right. Yeah, I'm so blessed that my, my daughter's 38, um, and she's a beautiful soul. Yeah. So, Miriam, I want to talk about, um, before our next break, you mentioned earlier in our conversation about grounding, right? Yes. And that, that was a big one for me that was missing from my life for decades. So you share about two foundational practices, with cleansing and grounding, that you talk about in depth in the book. Why don't we, so I don't have to interrupt you, let's take our last break now. And we'll come back and we'll dive into this because I think it's so important, especially with the world's frenetic energies right now, um, that we talk about this. I'll be back in a moment, my friends. I am with Marianne DeMarco, author of Medium Mentor. She's an internationally recognized psychic medium, healer, and spiritual teacher. I invite you to learn more about her sacred work at MarianneDeMarco.com. We'll be right back. This is OTRFM. 
part of the IOM Radio Network. Are you a highly sensitive, empathic woman ready to release the layers of false beliefs and emotional blocks holding you back from living the life you deserve and desire? Now is the time to clear those false beliefs sabotaging your life so you can access the joy and possibility waiting for you on the other side. Neurotransformational coach Kathy Castile, herself a highly sensitive, is passionate about supporting and empowering women in reclaiming their self-worth, finding their authentic voice, and in releasing the layers of sabotaging beliefs holding them back. Kathy trained with Tony Robbins, Robert Kiyosaki, and Sean Smith, and intuitively merges numerous coaching, leadership, and healing methodologies to serve the entire spectrum of human behavior, creating transformational changes so you can make long-lasting breakthroughs in your life. Learn more at kathy-castile.com. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. Welcome back. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. I'm going to, we're continuing the conversation. I'm with Marianne DeMarco today. We're talking now about the, the power of cleansing and grounding. So for you, what have you discovered in this transformational work that you're doing of why it's so important? Mm, well, draining your energy. When we don't ground and protect, and we have, we are, in, especially if there are psychic mediums listening out there, um, I know you probably have a lot of mothers and moms, you know, just women who are always outputting healers, constantly putting, we're outputting our energy often. Or if, even if you're doing this for yourself, if you're going through a lot, if you're always taking care of everybody else, if you are having a lot of stress, replenishing your energy and grounding and protecting your energy is vital to keeping your physical body, your mental body, your spiritual body, and your emotional body balanced in the best way possible. So I learned really early on Linda, that that is a very important part of my practice because what I was finding is I was getting like spiritual hangovers. You know, I was, I was reading people a lot and putting all of this information out there and it was so much fun, but I really wasn't honoring myself in all of this. So grounding and protecting becomes very important because we want to keep our, vib our vibration sustained. When we lower our vibration, we open ourselves up to uh, maybe some heavier energy around us or um, even heavier tra uh, translation in our lives. So one of the things I do is I bring in the light every single day. I imagine a beam of light coming from the top of my head, cascading down my face, throughout my body, out my ears. And I walk you through that in the book. I, I envision those three beams of light coming from each foot and my tailbone down into the center of mother earth. And I do this uh, release of anything that's no longer serving me in the physical, mental, and emotional body. And I allow that to come out of me and transmute into white light. That's a, that's an everyday thing. It's a very important part of my grounding practice. The other thing I do is when I feel called, I will smudge an area, a beautiful practice that we've learned from indigenous people and native Americans. And I talk about that in the book. Uh, I, I'll hold a crystal uh, and allow that to be a conductor of energy. And the biggest thing is boundaries. Talk to your guides about your boundaries. What is it that you want to receive and what is it that you don't want to receive? I think I say in the book, people pleasers beware or watch out or something like that, you know, because when you start stating, stating boundaries in your spiritual world, you'll state them in your physical world and vice versa. So you want to really place yourself in environments and around people that uh, feel 
you feel good and protected around and or if you put if you're in a toxic environment and there's no way you can get out of it maybe your workplace is kind of icky make sure you're bringing in that light asking your guides to clear the space before you go in there and then releasing all of that at the end of the day if you've been if you're a psychic or a healer you've been reading people all day release that energy do a beautiful release ceremony for yourself and again in your work environment leave it at work release it back uh, so that you're not bringing it home with you. These are kind of non-negotiables in my spiritual practice because I learned it the hard way. Yeah, especially um, a friend of mine, Colette Bavin reed um, mm. I've known her God 16 years from when I first started Aspire. So we've had many conversations over the years and she always, um, <laughs> her phrase is, I got to get rid of the energetic boogers. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, I like, say you've been spiritually slimed, you know, if you've been yes. spiritually slimed, yeah, you kind of don't want that, that, you want that ickiness off you. You can even do it more tangible too, because I know some people really need like something that feels more earthly. So get in the shower, you know, shower it off. Imagine the, the water as your white light cascading down and allow yourself to kind of shed it because yeah, you can really, if, if we're all empathic, some of us highly empathic. And if we don't learn these protecting techniques and these grounding techniques, we can bring anxiety onto ourselves in, in a heavier way. We can, our thought can change. You're very empathic. If you're around, uh, you know, somebody who has a headache or somebody who is kind of feeling depressed or whatever, we're like sponges, you know, suddenly we're like, why do I feel so down all of a sudden or whatever, what is this, you know, because we're constantly picking up on people's energy. And so, yeah, it's, it's sticky. It's yeah. sticky. And I noticed too, if we don't do our spiritual self-care, then our boundaries become porous energetically and in many other ways. And for me, I think that that moment of awareness is, hey, this isn't mine. Mm -hmm. I'm not anxious. This is me spending time with that person or maybe this um, event. I picked up other people's energy. I have, I'm very, um, I tell everyone I'm so aware with my spiritual and emotional self-care, not as great with my physical. I'm, I'm a much better, but my emotional spiritual for two decades now has been key to my healing, to my mm -hmm. growth of my business, finding joy, finding love, finding inner peace, all of it. So I, I don't, um, I don't go backwards on those. There's something else you said too is, um, You have to find what works for you. Because I remember be, when I first got on the path, I'd be like, oh, well, she's doing this. I'll do it. And wonder, thinking something's wrong with me when it didn't work. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it has to be. Well, two things that I heard you say, which I really love. You know, the physical can be really tough, too. We, we want to make sure that we are protecting ourselves physically. Maybe we balance the chakras out to help that go to uh, help that along or we pay attention obviously to the physical body because where, when our boundaries are low and when we're not grounding and protecting ourselves, we can really have a breakdown of the immune system. And then we can manifest things in areas of where we might be carrying that energy. So energy releases are really important and energy protection is really important as part of your grounding work. So thank you for mentioning that. And the other thing is, yeah, I mean, you know, having that, I don't know, awareness all the time and, and what is it that you were saying the 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 feeling of 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 kind of addressing the physical for yourself yeah like so for me emotional spiritual is so dedicated to and years ago i didn't take care of i didn't eat right i hardly ate enough mm -hmm. now i've come into balance more that the physical is just as important as the emotional and spiritual Right. But I always have to remind myself of the physical. Like, did you eat nutritious foods today? Did you drink your nine bottles of water? So I guess I was trying to say, I have to be more conscious of my physical self-care where now my emotional and spiritual self-care is just there. That's because, right. And I understand that, that, that balance of calling in for your physical mm -hmm. if we're not careful with our self-care. The other thing for me too is... Um, what I notice is it goes back to that same conversation that I told you before, Linda, is this your truth? Right. Um, when I know I am out of balance, well, let's say with the physical self-care and I go, Linda, is the old script running the show right now? Because the moment I ask myself that question, I know it's coming from my highest source. That's right. 
And That's I right. go, oh, shoot, put, don't go for that third cup of coffee, grab your green drink. <laughs> and, and I'm like, done. They're always paying attention. Yeah, I, yeah. I had my spiritual teacher told me, you know, you're not going to like alcohol as much. You're not going to like certain things the further that you get into this work. And I thought, oh, that's, I love a glass of red wine, you know, and I find now, you know, there's just some things that I can't really have as much anymore because the body becomes very sensitive as we carry this energy. And you will find that you, you're definitely going to be, I don't know if you found this, but I know that I have in my life that things that I used to be, ha have more of, I just can't do anymore. I can't indulge as much as I used to, Linda. It's, yeah. you know? I, but, so, it's so funny that you brought up alcohol because I got on this path a while ago. So it's been, let's say I've been with my honey, it's going to be 28 years. Mm. So tw 26 years ago, I had heard when I first got on the path, right? Yeah. Alcohol, tobacco, and drugs of course lower your vibration I'm like, oh, no I, I'm trying to raise my vibration so I said to myself I'm not going to drink alcohol for six months and you know my honey at first because we used to go out like twice a week right sure and I was like I've never gone back yeah it's uh I, I have never gone back and I've you know mm -hmm. the first few years you get your friends going come on and I'm like it, for me, that was just my decision from an energetic point of view, not even because of an alcohol point of view. Yeah. It, was, it was, no, I want to be a clear conduit. I want to get so clear with my own energy. And I really thought one day I'd go back. Um, I just never did. I love that. You know, uh, I, I don't have as much, I've never had a problem with it, but I've never, I don't, I can't, I cannot have it actually, not, need, uh, especially for the work you're doing, right? That's right. It, yes, absolutely. And I always tell people, if you're going for a reading also, by the way, and if you're learning how to tap into your point, you might want to take a look at, for, absolutely. If you're going for a reading, don't have any alcohol, it lowers your vibration. It makes it uh, difficult to receive a, a good reading. Uh, but you also definitely for yourself, take a look at what you're ingesting and what you're putting in the body. The body is very telling as to where you may be carrying energy and where you need releases and what can trigger that uh, through food and diet and exercise, whatever it looks like for you. And it's, it's an important part of grounding and protecting for sure. Yeah. One of the, the um, grounding things that we do, and it also is great for our mind is our sunrise um, every morning. We live in the middle of the woods on a beautiful spring fed pond. We go for a walk around the pond through the mm -hmm. woods, through a conservation area, and sometimes him and I talk and sometimes we don't, we just want to be, it is so grounding to start my day that way. Of course, yes. we live in New England, so I'm not saying about there when there's snow on the ground, but <laughs> it's, that's one of my grounding rituals, drawing a card before I start work. So we've had such an amazing conversation. We've talked about cleansing and grounding. We've talked about putting doubt aside, how that we're all intuitive. And I want to invite everyone, please. Go grab a copy of um, Miriam's new book, Medium Mentor, 10 Powerful Techniques to Awaken Divine Guidance for Yourself and Others. Um, you can get that at mariannedemarco.com. We still have about three or four minutes left, Marianne, and I wanted to ask you, um, let's see where I want to go to, to wrap. Why don't I do this? What would you like to share that you want the readers to know um, that can support them on their journey? I would love for your, your audience to know that if they, if they pick up this book or if they find another modality that they're drawn to, to say yes to it, give yourself permission to nurture your soul and nurture yourself and say yes to it. And know that even though your mind might be messing with you, that you have this light and this ability to open yourself up to hear your guidance with superior quality and clarity. And I promise you, it will be life-changing. Just know that you are worthy to receive that information and that your guides, your loved ones and angels on the other side are encouraging you to do so. Mm, that is so beautiful. And one of, um, I love, I'm curious, cause I always love to ask a lot of transformational leaders, what's your morning ritual? My morning ritual is uh, bringing in the light. I, mm -hmm. I express gratitude every single morning. I put um, light and healing light and protective light around my family. And then I, I get up and I spend a little time with my lovely dog. 
<laughs> who, is there, who gives me such beautiful high vibration. And I sit down and I do some breath work and just some really try not to look at my phone and just sit with my cup of coffee and honor the moment of peace before I go in and I start my day. And then I just ask my guides to be around me and to give me the words to serve while I work with my clients through the day. That's, that's my, that's my go-to routine in the morning. Mm, I love it. It's quite similar. I do my gratitude practice. I envision um, being the calling in the light so I can be the light. So I envision mm -hmm. my, like my aura getting bigger and bigger with love. Um, I don't, do the, I, I don't do the protection as, unless I think of it, but I love that you incorporate it daily. It's part of your daily practice. So I love that. And of course the coffee. Um, mm -hmm. And that's the biggest thing I think too, is staying away from distraction, right? Yeah. Starting our day within ourselves, not out there through social media and everything else. So that's, that's a powerful tip that we leave you with my friends. And Marianne, I want to thank you for joining me for the, this conversation. Um, for sharing your wisdom in media mentor and making the tools and strategies available to so many more. I want to invite everyone to visit MarianneDemarco.com. So thank you, my beautiful friend. Thank you so much for having me. You are such a beautiful light. And um, I, I just loved my time with you. I loved being here. And I'm so grateful for our moment together that we can talk and share this information. It's beautiful to be around people of like mind. So I'm really I'm really grateful for the moment. Appreciate it. You're welcome, my friend. Until next time, my friends, choose love, choose joy, choose happiness. Blessings. Thanks for listening to Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy. Join our sacred space every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern and meet leading female visionaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. Inspired Conversations with Linda Joy is a soulful venue where guests share the obstacles they've overcome, along with wisdom and lessons learned on their personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired Conversations to empower you on your path to authentic and soulful living.